yeah, I've gone through a lot of self-discovery, a lot of self-healing, a lot of intentional choice to show up for myself and figure this out. And I really wish I had had somebody along the way to help me as well. Mm -hmm. Um, But along the way, along my journey, I have had people pop in and out of my life that have helped me or given me a lead or, or something to go from. Yeah. What is going on? Welcome to the School Site Corner. I'm your host, Joe Sims. We are here today for an ETG session, and I have with me Miss Bonnie Gonzalez. She is the founder and the owner of the Perinatal Coaching Alliance. So welcome, Bonnie. Hi, Joe. Thank you so much for having me on today. I really appreciate that. Awesome. Super excited to give some great content. So speaking of content, if you would, just tell us a little bit about what you do. Okay. Um, I am a nurse midwife and I'm also a nurse coach. I do perinatal coaching. Um, I have been in women's healthcare now for 27 years and a nurse midwife for um, just about 24 years now. And so I am very passionate about women's healthcare, women's physical, mental, and emotional state throughout, throughout their lifespan. But I'm really focusing on women who are in pregnancy, getting ready for birth, postpartum, and women who just really have had some trauma, some problems with their pregnancies, with their births, with postpartum. Um, So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. The Coaching Alliance is super exciting. I just recently founded that. Um, My dream is for it to be a resource for where women can go and have support at any phase of their kind of perinatal period. Let me explain what perinatal is real quick. Sure. Because a lot of people don't know that word. So perinatal is the time frame before pregnancy all the way through one year postpartum. So it helps women throughout that entire pregnancy, getting ready for pregnancy, having a great pregnancy, getting ready for birth, working on their immediate two weeks postpartum. That's a really challenging time. And then even the first full year for women postpartum is really tough. Yeah. Um, how I play into this and how I came across the the interest with what you do is I typically work with kids, you know, starting at the age three and up, you know, typically 18. And so hearing that or knowing that there's an area below the age of three, an area that mm-hmm. usually is a lot of, you know, the mother taking care of the child and having to go through that in whatever way that looks like. Obviously, mm-hmm. that plays a big part in how the child develops later on. So that's where my yeah. connection to where what you're doing, it plays a big piece into that. So Mm -hmm. you said 27 years you've been doing this. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now I've been just recently um, started being a nurse coach. Um, I have found women throughout my years of being a midwife, just really struggling, struggling to have the support, struggling to reach out. It's almost taboo in our culture for women to admit that, Hey, I'm having a problem. And I really wanted to help give that support to women. And I love that you work with children up to three and you're pointing out that even younger for focusing on women. So women who have a lot of um, depression, anxiety in their pregnancy are at severe risk of having much higher rates of depression and anxiety postpartum. And believe it or not, women who are having these problems in pregnancy, have a very difficult time bonding with their baby. And that bonding can really affect how that child um, grows up, which can then you see that in your, you know, three and up the the group that you work with a lot too. And so children really need that um, important bond with their mother and addressing these issues before is really important. Yeah. And I would say, speaking as a father of two kids, my um, wife, she went through obviously the pregnancies and it was very rocky, mm-hmm. you know, having to deal with a lot of the, um, it was well beyond the morning sickness. It was constant sickness to where mm-hmm. there's no way that I can resonate with what she's going to. And yes, I believe it was traumatic to her body and just going through that to where me as a husband, I'm trying my best to, you know, find ways to support her. But 
seeing and knowing that you have resources out there to support women that may be going through something similar like this is very helpful and assuring to anyone that's listening right now. So I'm just thinking like, Oh, I wish you were around or I wish I'd found something like this to be able to, you know, put in front of my wife's face back then, but you know, we made it through, Mm -hmm. but I also see the benefit of having someone that can help coach you through these things as well. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I want to do is to support women. Um, like with your wife with nausea, it can be so severe for some women, it impacts their life, which leads to depression, and anxiety, and worsening, and then worsening, getting ready for the baby birth, and then postpartum, it's just, it affects every aspect of women's lives. And yeah, the word needs to get out there that there is support, women don't need to be alone. Even if it's just having like, their own personal cheering squad, you know, personal, private cheering squad, um, and also learning how to intentionally choose how a woman wants to show up. And that's what the purpose of coaching is, is to help women really work through these areas, work through the intention of, I want to choose to be happy rather than let these struggles, you know, drown me and, and affect how I show up in life. For sure. Now, I do want to touch base on this. This is called an ETG session. For those of you who do not know, that stands for (laughs) Embrace the Grind. And we are all faced with challenges in our life and how we respond to those challenges dictates the results that we get. So like I mentioned earlier, you've been doing this for quite some time. This Mm -hmm. didn't happen overnight. Can you tell us a little bit about that journey, maybe some obstacles that you were faced with going through there? Yeah, I would love to. My journey started, um, I guess the really beginning part of it is I found myself um, a young mom. I had my baby at age 21 with a very abusive husband, and my birth experience was pretty traumatic. So I've gone through the birth trauma, and I've gone through a very abusive relationship Um I pulled myself out of that relationship, recognizing that I didn't want my child to be abused, basically. So I found myself as a single mom with a little baby, and I started college from the very, very basic beginning. And I worked my way through college, through my master's degree, getting my nurse midwifery degree. And I recognized how hard it is to struggle. It's hard. And it's again, it's a matter of choice. So when I found myself as a single mom in a, uh, trying to figure out how am I going to support my child? I chose, um, to show up for myself, to heal, to figure out how I can support my son and myself and make a really great life. And then through the years, as I've been a midwife, um, just seeing the struggle that other women are going through relationship struggles and impacts their pregnancy, their birth experiences. I've seen and witnessed how a traumatic birth can really impact how a woman functions. And then also how a woman um, anticipates and prepares for her second or more birthing experience. So Yeah, I've gone through a lot of self-discovery, a lot of self-healing, a lot of intentional choice to show up for myself and figure this out. And I really wish I had had somebody along the way to help me as well. Mm -hmm. Um, But along the way, along my journey, I have had people pop in and out of my life that have helped me or given me a lead or or something to go from. Yeah. Yeah. It's always great when you can look back and say, maybe you don't see it in the moment, but kind of protective factors, people looking out for you, kind of helping you, giving you the information that you need right when you need it. Mm -hmm. As I was telling you before we started the call, um, me running into a resource to get started with this podcast, how it just fell in my lap right at the right moment. And I look back and I'm like, oh, that was so clutch. And so having the support of others, however that may look, um, especially Mm -hmm. thinking about my wife, she has her I forget the technical term for it, but she has her group of friends that she just relies on and they're, they're her rock. So Mm -hmm. I know that she reached Mm -hmm. and leaned on them during those times for whatever reason it may have been. So uh, protective factors, they're always there to protect us from, you know, things that we can't see. 
Mm -hmm. Yep. Aren't they wonderful though, too, to realize, um, sometimes you can realize in the moment that you have that coming into your life, but oftentimes you don't really realize it until afterwards, you know, a day after a month after even years afterwards. Mm -hmm. So sometimes to lead back into your podcast, embrace the grind when you embrace the grind in my mind, that is an intentional choice to show up for yourself. And you can choose in life to either let your experiences teach you and help you move forward, or you can let your experiences drown you and have misery and just so much um, hopelessness. For sure. And so when you embrace that grind, you really have to sometimes intentionally choose what direction you're going to have. And I feel that for women, having a perinatal coach helps them consciously choose to embrace that life that they are handed sure. and to move through it so that they are happy, healthy, their families are happy, healthy, and their children are happy, healthy, and they grow into great adults. Yeah. Um, one of the first things that you touched on when you talked about your journey, you said that you were going through it in college and you had to take care of yourself first. When it comes mm -hmm. to working with these parents that are going through maybe some of these traumatic experiences, like how do you help them, you know, take care of themselves in a way first? Um, because obviously they're caring for their young unborn child or newly born child, but how do you help mm -hmm. them care for themselves? That is a great question. Um First, it's recognizing their thought processes, you know, the circumstances they have and what their thought process are, because we act on the feelings we have from our thoughts. And often when we are faced with feeling frustrated, anger, you know, they um, oftentimes we will attribute our feelings to another person that they are the cause. And when you allow somebody else to impact how you feel, you're not taking care of yourself. An important thing to take care of yourself is to learn how you can choose to change your thoughts about something which changes your feelings and therefore how you act in life. Um, so that's a big starting point when I work with people is to help kind of shift their frame of thinking from one of despair, sorrow, anxiety, helplessness to one of positive, I'm in control, I can take charge of how I think and how I feel. And that alone is so empowering that women find once they are able to do that, they have no problem going out for a spa day or going out with the girls or doing things that are important to them, doing things that help fill them as a person, as a unique individual. And once they have learned these kinds of things, they can then give back in a way to their families, to their children from a self-fulfilled, self-filled, self-happy kind of uh, perspective, then it's not so difficult to give. Okay. So working with a lot of parents and helping them take care of themselves, what are some highlight stories that you've encountered, you know, throughout your time working with them to where it's like, mm. I know I'm doing the right thing. I'm making a difference. Mm -hmm. um, I've got, oh gosh, I've got so many stories. So one, one woman I worked with, she was trying to get pregnant and she was struggling because she had gained a lot of weight from her previous pregnancy. Her birth experience was hard. She knew she wanted more children, um, but how she felt lost. How can I take care of myself and yet have another child? And that was really weighing very heavy on her mind. So we really worked a lot on her self-appreciation, her self-love, and how she was kind of viewing her struggle one of, I can't, I won't, I'm not good enough to one of, I am awesome. I love myself enough to take care of myself. I can do this and um, moving forward. And she learned how to set boundaries. She learned how to ask for help from her, um, from her husband 
um, a lot of women, and she was a classic example, they take on the responsibilities of home, of children, as if they are the only person to do it, subconsciously, consciously, you know, whatever. And then they begin to resent their partners because they're feeling like they have to take it on. So she learned how to set those boundaries, how to reach out, how to ask for help, and how it is okay to say, my house can be a mess. My, you know, I'm not the most thin, skinny kind of person, but yet I can go and enjoy life. I can enjoy my child and I can enjoy anticipating having this next child join our family. And so it was very liberating for her to learn these skills that she um, needed to learn, to learn that she's not an island and unto herself and that she can really reach out and get help. And it's amazing how many women think this way, but they, in the moment, they really don't realize that they're thinking these things, mm -hmm. that they view life this way. And so that's part of it is getting down to the roots and trying to really um, reflectively point out to some people where they are thinking, how it's affecting their lives and to move on. So that's one example um, of some of the things. I think that that's pretty common is, again, women take on the responsibilities of so many things when they really don't have to, and they yeah. don't need to. And I always like to kind of give the contrast coming from my perspective. I like to think I'm a very thoughtful person, um, especially when it comes to, or it came to my wife being pregnant and being intuitive mm -hmm. about a lot of things, but I didn't always get it right. And I can think for maybe the people, the guys out there that aren't as intuitive and those moms do feel like they're just kind of going through it on their own and they do everything. It's like, that must be kind of hard to find your voice in the midst of all of that and, you know, yeah. set those boundaries. But when you're able to do it, then you can, you know, have a lot more calm and a lot more flow, a better flow with things. Exactly. And women in, uh, as a result of all this, women are able to do a lot more self-care and feel as if they are not lost, um, is the word that comes to mind in their mm -hmm. relationships as a mom, as a partner, um, women end up feeling like they've lost their identity. They don't know who they are anymore. And when they are able to reach out and get the coaching, get the guidance that they need to transform their life of one of lost, but to finding themselves of one of drowning in the responsibilities, drowning in their perceived um, dysfunctional relationship to one of a thriving, wonderful relationship, a ability to know that they don't have to take on the world on themselves. Mm. And so that is so empowering. And it's so exciting to see women feeling empowered, moving through this and becoming their own individual self, yet being able to be the partner, being the mother that they really want to be as well. For sure. Now, I'm wondering if there are any similarities or differences between maybe like a, a mom that has two children already and this is the third child, or if this is someone that, you know, it's that first time going through the pregnancy process, like, are there differences that you come into um, talking with these mothers that they deal with, or is it pretty much the same like stressors that you see reoccurring? Um, there are some similarities because they do recognize the responsibility and the life-changing event. So whether it is a woman's first baby or her 10th baby, life is going to change, life transforms. But the unique thing is when it's a first baby, it's not only the birth of a baby, it's the birth of a new woman. She moves into that realm of being a mother. And that is so transformative in and of itself. And with these moms who are having their first baby, they find themselves often struggling with the isolation, the depression, the whole loss of identity, more so than I think women who are having second, third, and more babies. The commonality I find with women who are having a second baby is that even if they've had their first baby 10 or 15 years prior, um, they almost feel like 
how am I going to possibly love another individual as much as I love this first baby? How am I possibly going to um, add in the responsibilities of taking care of a second or more child that they're having? And believe it or not, the truth is, is that when a woman has that second or more baby, their life once again transforms into having additional responsibilities and love and additional it's like their heart expands twofold threefold yeah. you know however it's almost um it's almost magical how that can happen that women can actually just expand their love expand their abilities expand their abilities to to juggle all of the responsibilities that come with having a child and it's um it's scary. And the real thought out there is for women who I don't know how I'm going to possibly manage all these additional responsibilities and love this child as much as I love my first one. And so that's a big common theme I see with women who are having their second or more baby. Yeah. And when you say things like that, um, it kind of the perspective you've heard the saying, you can't see the forest for the trees. Yes. I yes. guess I think of it backwards to where you're so deep into the forest where you can't see out of the the current situation of things and that's kind of the place where you get it's like you're just stuck you think these mm -hmm. things and it's not like in anything's wrong with your thoughts but they can be you know spiraling if you're you know if you allow them to or if you don't have the resource to kind of work out of it whatever it may look like mm -hmm. um and you said yeah. that you see that pretty consistently that matter what child it is Yes, I do. I see women really struggling with that. Um, and I really love that analogy of being, you know, so deep in the forest that you can't see the trees. And I guess the the thing I really want to spread is there is help, there is support to reach out. You don't have to do this alone. And sometimes it takes somebody um, holding your hand, so to speak, and guiding you out of that forest so you can see all of the trees guiding you out of that situation and helping you learn how to choose to show up for yourself so you don't have to live in such a depressive um isolating kind of situation for sure yeah um i think about the etg motto embrace the grind and a lot of times you may you know think like oh i don't want to you know go through a grind and how i view it is the grind isn't forever it's just a period of time, mm -hmm. kind of like you're talking about where you're being intentional about what you're doing. And sometimes mm -hmm. it just sucks. Sometimes it is yep. hard. And so in that period of time, that's where this mindset plays a big piece, because if you can just push through and, you know, make sure you're doing what you need to do, then you're going to come out on the other end. Okay. It's not going to be a grind forever until you come right. to your next challenge. So just knowing mm -hmm. that, you know, trouble don't last always as they say it, but you know, you will yeah. get through it. Just keep your head down and, and do what you need to do find the resources mm -hmm. that are out there for you. Yes, I love that. Yep, exactly. It doesn't last forever and there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, do you have any current projects or things that you're working on right now that you can tell us about? Um, the current thing I, I am working on is I do have a program, a two month program for women who are getting ready to have a birth. And then also continuing for the first two weeks postpartum. So that's a supported motherhood program that I have that women can actually reach out and get the help that they need to really have the guidance to navigate their emotional state, their physical state, because there's so many physical crazy things that happen with having a baby, and then their um, mental health state. And again, women get so caught up in the the grind to go back with what you're saying that having this program will help them move on through that grind and have a guide to help them get through it and come out on the other side um, just shining so sure. that's the project that I'm working on right now is to um, promote this two-month program that I have for women okay mm -hmm. if someone wanted to follow up more directly what's the best way they can you know find information about this or get in touch with you I think the best way is to probably go to my website, www.peri, P-E-R-I, coach, and then G-R-P for group, perrycoachgroup.com. 
um, org. And I have information on there about the Support of Motherhood program or just connecting with me by email and discussing the situation that they're in. Again, because I am a perinatal coach and a nurse midwife, I do work with women through all phases of their life. So it's not just that situation, but this is the program that I am kind of um, offering at the moment. Um, but I do work with anybody who is really struggling. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, and as I mentioned, I'll make sure all of these links are active so you can have direct access to it. Anyone that's listening, um, do you have any final things that you'd like to share with us before we get out of here? Um, I think the final word I really want to share, Joe, is that when you <clears throat> go through life, challenges offer um, either lessons in life or they can offer us more depression, anxiety, and to intentionally choose how you want to show up in life for yourself, which in turn will sh help you show up as a better person for your family, for your kids, for your partners, and to embrace the grind in the way that you can learn from it. You will get through it. There is help. There is support. And all it takes sometimes is just reaching out and connecting. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we will take that. And until next time, take care. All right. Thanks, Joe. Bye-bye.